Mark, I'm sorry, I'm distraught. May 16th. On May 16th at 6 30, by order. Um, so I believe we have three on Zoom, three in person, and one absent. Perfect. Then we have a quorum. Thank you. Um, I would like everybody to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you. Um, is there an open forum? Do we have anybody that's wishing to speak? Yes. I'm sorry, do we have anybody to yeah, we, to speak? Yeah, we do, uh, Elizabeth, and we can start off. We have uh, Brian Chamberlain. Can you come to the uh, podium, please? And just give us your street address. Sorry, uh, just your street, please. Yeah, it's 21556 Wyndham Run. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can, you can okay. five minutes, so. Excellent. Uh, you can talk about the pickleball courts. Uh, so I wanted to bring up, we have a, a group here that plays, it's present in the room, plus a pretty big section of our community. We need to talk up here. Yeah, here? All right. Uh, so we have uh, the pickleball courts out here. We have some safety concerns that we wanted to get addressed. Uh, for some quick fixes, there's still a, a down light pole. Uh, just for lighting and the fact that it's down on the ground as a tripping hazard is a concern. Uh, this There needs to be a center gate that separates the section of the courts right now. It's just a small netting, which is a pretty bad tripping hazard. Um, should be an actual gate that's there. And there's also, I think, believe from the storm, there's a broken top rail that is pretty dangerous. It's snap metal that needs to get fixed before somebody tries to use that for support. Um, those are kind of the small things. From a bigger perspective, the courts that are closest to the ball field are right up against the fence. And so there's a really big safety concern. Someone's gonna break a wrist, they're gonna run into that, and have a bigger uh, bigger injury. For pickleball courts, you're supposed to be 20 feet wide for the court, but there's supposed to be an additional five feet on both sides to allow movement past the court. Um, there's about a half a foot between that fence and that court. So um, on top of that, the cement's not level, so part of that is there's lobbing in the game if you're going to back pedal. The back courts that are closest to the tennis courts have a severe drop off, and someone's just waiting to trip or blow out a knee running off of that. You have the same problem in the courts that are closest to us here. There's a really severe drop off as you come off the court, and we've had several people that have twisted an ankle or hurt a knee um, playing on that section. The overall fix that would fix all those problems would be centering the court. So that's the four courts that are closest to the baseball field are right on top of each other. There's a big gap, and then the next two courts. So if we actually had those centered, all three, you'd have five feet on all sides. You wouldn't be too close to the fence, and then you could get away from the slope. That's kind of dangerous for people running around on the court. Um, so this would involve, obviously, someone's gonna have to come in and level all the cement, and then reset the nets but it would take care of every single one of those problems from a safety concern standpoint. Those are the biggest things as far as safety. Uh, however, pickleball is the fastest growing sport uh, in the country, so just for an amenity standpoint, it is important just to have that as a good amenity, especially compared to the rest of the neighborhoods that are around here as far as the place and Course Crew Shores, Bellaterra, Wild Blue that all have brand new pickleball courts with shade and water pretty nice facility, so it would help us kind of go up against that even just from a, a value of an amenity as well. But obviously wanted to bring up the safety first. I understand the leveling of cement. Mm -hmm. What did you say about resetting something? So where the, the nets are now, they're permanent nets, right? But the, because it's too close to the fence, you got to move the whole court. So the net's got to come out, right? And you've got to center them. So the, 
it's hard to do without a picture, but there, there's six courts out there. Four of them are right on top of each other, right next to each other, and pinned up against the fence. And then two of them are off by their own. So if you just equally spaced all the sections of courts, you'd have enough space. So you actually need to move the courts just within the original pad that's there. Well, I would also like to comment on the stuff so you know what uh, we're doing here in the office. Mm -hmm. um, and they all are very good concerns that you have. The light pole, actually, I just got the estimate about a half an hour ago, and I just gave it to the board. Uh, they're quoting about $6,500 to redo that light, so that is in the process. Uh, the top rail in the middle of the court has been contracted out to Carter Fences. Uh, they did the playground, but they're still, for some reason, not doing uh, the finishing job on the tennis courts with that middle court and the top rail. Uh, more sports has been contacted in regards to the issues that you have mentioned on the pickleball spacing and also the uh, unlevel areas. Um, I've got an email into them to start addressing that issue um, with whomever is doing buildings and all that. I think, well, it'll be announced tonight whomever is doing that. And uh, we had the additional striping for the rest of the pickleball uh, courts on the te tennis courts, but we put that on hold until we get the rest of these issues uh, resolved. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. If you're interested in the background, uh, the pickleball courts used to be tennis courts. Yeah. And when they did the pickleball courts, they did the one tennis court first. That's where the four came from. And when they did the second tennis court, there wasn't room for four more. Uh, thanks, Bill, for that. He's told me that. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, makes sense on why the spacing is the way it is. Yeah, that's why the spacing is the way it is. Okay. Excellent. Tammy? Yes. Would we be required to extend all the fencing as Brian talked about to have five feet between the end of the court and the fence would we have to have the fence company extend them out toward the direction of the ball field uh, the only that I know of the only way we would have to do that if we were doing uh, legalized or whatever you call competitions but this is just yeah. for fun, so I don't think so. Without legal advice, I don't know. But I don't think you have to because it's not a competition type event. It's just for fun. Correct. So for, for tournaments, you need 10 feet past each court. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. If you want a tournament place, it's got to be 10 feet on each side. For rackets, five. But like I said, that's why I was saying re, like recentering them to his point. Two were squished together, and then the third got added. If you evenly space them, you don't have to touch the fencing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tammy, so just could you put that on the agenda for next month so as Tammy gets the proposal? Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, Tammy, uh, Elizabeth, the next speaker is Teresa Pelusi. Am I saying your last name right? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, it doesn't look like it, but I am a pickleball player. And, <laughs> and we are so grateful to have those courts in our community. And if you come here during season, there are probably 20 to 30 people waiting to get on the courts. It's a wonderful thing to have in our community. That being said, and I know all these things are very expensive, and this is my opinion. I didn't do any research or anything into this. But to me, and I don't know if anybody else is feeling the same, I don't feel that anybody in the, I, I, I'm saying it wrong. I wish people would spend more time maintaining the courts. When we play pickleball, there's leaves all over the ground. And I, it's that tree over there. And, and you can't help it. But you know what, in the morning, I see the man come. I live across the street from the park so I could see what goes on. They clean. The, the volleyball courts, which nobody is ever on. They clean the bocce courts. Again, and if you see how many people are pickleball, it's packed. So there's leaves all over the place. That's one thing. And during the hurricane, nobody came to even look at it. We cleaned it up ourselves. We have a girl in our community, Kathy Hudson, God bless her. She came and picked up all the fences. And, and right now, everything is held together with zip ties. So I know that those things cost money, but there's so many people that play here. And I think that it warrants, not only because so many people are enjoying it, but it is a safety hazard. And just even the other day, and 
all we have to do is come in and say to Nicole, our illustrious woman that we love, <laughs> is, Nicole, this is here. The other day there was weeds all over the place. And I had to say to her, please, can somebody come? We're afraid that it's poison ivy. And so these are just little things. And of course, we would like to have state-of-the-art pickleball courts. And I know that that takes money, and there's things that take precedence. But there's so many people here that enjoy this. And I think that it's something that maybe there should be a committee or somebody looking into it. Because number one, there's a lot of people. But number two, it, there's big safety concerns. Nobody is looking into these things. We have light fixtures, these things, zip tied all along the fence to hold the balls. And, and, and sometimes you go, you fall into it, and I, I just don't understand why nobody is coming to see what is going on there, because that's what I feel like. I feel like people should come and see what's going on. And not that we're complaining, we're so grateful. This is the greatest community around here. I just wish that there would be more things and maybe we should have a committee or somebody that could say on a regular basis, hey, can you guys please come and blow the courts off? Can you please fix the nets? Can you please, you know, like the tables are all over, the, the ball things, because somebody is going to get hurt one day. So, uh, and that's all I got to say. Happy day. <laughs> Elizabeth, the next person is uh, Mike Farley. Farley. My name is Mike Farley. I live in Lancaster Run. My three items are uh, the Adult Activity Committee. I see it's on the agenda for today, which is wonderful. And I was wondering if the vetting process will be spoken of in that. <coughs> My second issue is the financial reports. I see the, the treasurer's report is on the, uh, the agenda. I was wondering if we'll be seeing or spoken about the financial reports, which seems to have eluded us for the last several months, at least. And lastly, the community center shades behind us. We've been waiting for these shades for, it seems, a long, long time now. I think they've been ordered, and I just was wondering what the status of it is. Thank you very well, much. Well, I can let you know the status on the drapes. Um, I've contacted uh, Dan uh, by email twice. I called him twice. Uh, I finally got a hold of him this afternoon. I told him I could not process the 50% down until he provided the warranty information. He finally did get that to me about an hour ago. So we'll go ahead and proceed with the deposit and getting that done. And what was the second item? Financial. I, I can answer that one. I, I can answer that one. The, I now have the year-to-date financials as they are for the activities committee. I will be sending that out uh, pending whatever happens today um, to whatever committee there is. Anyone else that wants a copy of it, it's really nothing more than an Excel spreadsheet, but I'm happy to provide it. Uh, if you want to send me an email, I will give you my email right now if you want to write it down. Our Rich can give it to you, our Todd can give it to you, however you want to do it, but I'll be more than glad to send anybody a copy. Like I said, I now put I'm going to give it to whoever needs it pending what happened with the committee is assignment. Thank you. Back to the shades for a second. Thank you. Thank you very much, but is there some sort of a, a schedule when this can happen? We, you're going to get the deposit check and then of course... Well, he's going to be in tomorrow to finish doing the measuring, and as soon as he gets the deposit check, which I will submit tomorrow, um, he can order the stuff and then it, he'll be here to install. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Mike, we did approve that last month's meeting for X amount of dollars. So it is approved. Yep. That's the only thing that we were waiting for. And I understood the, the issue was the uh, guarantee the was the holdback of yeah. so That has been resolved. And of course, I just kind of keep track of it so we it stays alive and in our minds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Elizabeth, the uh, next speaker is Alali Santiago. You guys are out of control. Out of control. Out of 
Secretary. Good evening. My name is Lolly Santiago. I live on Wyndham Run, and I'm here to ask for a pay raise. <laughs> uh, okay. Here we're talking about the pickleball court, the safety. Not so much the adults, but these little kids that are out here in the evenings. I already met, my face met that fence on this side, and my knee met the, uh, the, ch the seat that was there. And I had a big black eye, everybody thought it worked, and my wife hit me. Uh, so it's dangerous out there. This court here has a cant. It goes like this, and then it drops off. Anyone carrying the momentum with them are going to meet with that fence, like I did. You get one of these kids that are 10, 11, 12 that move quick, are going to run in and going to get hurt. And we want to avoid that. One other thing I want to add. Talking about pickleball courts, if this is a thought, if instead of going towards the, the football or the baseball field, maybe we can use the parking lot convert that into the two pickleball courts here so we can leave the 20 people that are waiting during season, okay? Um, again, I'm retiring in 13 days, so uh, I'll be playing a lot of pickleball here pretty soon. <laughs> and the other tennis court, uh, I've only seen, you know, maybe one guy instructing out there with little kids, and that's great, but the other one, I barely see anyone using that court. Maybe we can convert that into a pickleball court to move in the area, okay? Um, but guys, safety is the most important thing with these courts, the can't. Uh, if we can add other courts behind, right in the parking lot, everybody else can park out here, uh, so be it. Thank you. Next person, Elizabeth, is uh, Walter Mazink. Mazink. Yes. Thank you, Walter. Just your street. Hello, my name is Walter on Wyndham Run. I'm um, just new to the neighborhood about a year ago. Just have a few concerns. Um, the pond behind our home has all kinds of debris in it. It's pretty disgusting looking. And I see the rest of the ponds around here are upkept perfectly, but the ones backing up to 75 are, it's pretty gross. And then also uh, the noise pollution, I've noticed, and I've been told by my neighbor, that the noise pollution has gotten worse since Hurricane Charlie and then Ian, and uh, it gets pretty loud. Um, and. Uh, want to see if there's anything that can be done with that, if that has anything to do with our community or if that has to do with uh, the state and the highway. Um, and then uh, also the, uh, the weight room, um, it seems like it could use a little bit of a refreshing. The, uh, the bench is starting to get torn and I don't really think the there's stuff that's been on the floor for probably like three months, and it's just dust and debris just building up on it. Um, that's pretty much about it. Okay. Thank you. Elizabeth, that's it on the, uh, the public, uh, but do we have any questions on the board of any of uh, the folks that have discussed tonight. If you don't mind me asking, Elizabeth. I have a question. I have a question, Rich. Sure. Isn't the, aren't the lakes, no matter where they are, the CDD's responsibility? You're, you're absolutely right, and I was gonna mention that. That is a CDD responsibility. Actually, are you talking about the ponds themselves? All the water. There's the ponds, that's our region. Yeah, that's actually the pond cleanup and stuff is the HOA. I talk to Carlton every week. We have addressed Pond 28, but I have received pictures. Uh, at this point, he's only able to spray about half of it because they cannot get a boat in due to the water level. Uh, so he cannot get around from one side to get it from the back, so he can only spray half of it. And a lot of that stuff, that, what he's spraying, is sinking to the bottom, and all the stuff that's dead on the bottom is coming up. 
it's that time of year till we get the rain it's going to be not pretty uh, I know just last month we did do they do a quarterly trash pickup uh, of all the trash so there is going to be scum until we can start getting some rain they can't get to it yeah, one thing for me on that, and I'll look a little more into it. So in Tennessee, when I was stationed there for a long time, we had the same problems in Tennessee. You get all that nasty scum, and we would actually just put a bale of barley um, half in the water, and it neutralizes the pH. It's not bad for fish. It's not bad for the environment, but scum goes away. All oh, the algae dies. Uh, it's something worth looking into. I don't know, because Florida's a different, you know, different climate and stuff, so I don't know if that would work, but it worked amazing. It's worth checking out. Yeah. Okay. Tammy? Yes. Tammy, I have a question. Um, I know he goes by both, but I've also seen him on the ATV. Does, is that the same kind of chemical that he's spray, spraying while he's on the ATV, or is that something different? Um, as far as I know, um, I can't answer that. I do not know. Okay, maybe we can check into that to see if he, it's accessible. Well, all I know is he says he cannot get back there. So I was assuming by whatever vehicle and not able to carry the stuff back there to spray. But I can check that out. Yes, please do. Hi, I have a question. Is it possible to ask a question if I'm on Zoom? Sure. Just identify yourself where you live. Uh, thank you. My name is Susan. Can you all hear me? Yes. What is, what is your address? Uh, we're new residents here as well, and we live now on Pembroke. And uh, I just had a couple questions. Um, we've noticed since we've moved in that there's a lot of loud mufflers and exhausts on vehicles, and they seem to be driving really fast up and down the road. Um, and they're also leaving burn marks on the roads. And I just didn't know if there's a noise ordinance or a way that this can be kind of reined in a little bit. I'll, I'll take a stab at that. You're not. Go ahead. Uh, Susan, thank you. The um, our rovers are 24/7. Uh, I, I know uh, safety and security has a committee. Maybe they want to address it specifically. Um, and I don't want to take anyone else's steam. But our rovers have no legal authority to stop anyone or cite anyone. Uh, maybe they could take a plate number and turn it into the community center and we can determine where that automobile is registered uh, and if we're seeing them leaving skid marks on the road or if if there's a loud exhaust or a muffler I think we would be hard pressed to uh, enforce that we would have to show that it would be uh, a certain decibel reading uh, that might be in violation of local ordinance, a bylaw, or a statute law. And I don't think we even have a decibel uh, meter here, do we? No, we have not crossed that. Yeah. It, it's, it's beyond know, our... It's, it's hard to navigate through. It's just, you know, being in a, I don't know, we kind of purchased a gated community for just comfort and quiet and safety. Um, and it's... It's just a little uh, obnoxious when they have to downshift four times just to come to a stop sign, and then they have to seem like it's a quarter mile race to the gate, and it's it's just uh, it's just a little frustrating. Well, what we can do is we can make our periodic uh, police patrol available of the issues, and when they come in and provide their patrols. Maybe, spend, is it generally on Pembroke that you're complaining about? No. Um, I think, well, it, there is at times up in down Pembroke, but primarily it's really from the four-way stop, right, the main gate, and then they just 
they just, you know, get on it. They just fly down to the other, whether they're coming from gate to the four-way stop sign or from the stop sign to the, to the gate. And of course, we're three or four houses in, so we hear it. It could be, it's usually late at night or early in the morning. Uh, I might suggest, Tammy, if when we have our police patrols, if we can alert them to uh, this kind of activity. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen, I've seen the skid marks on Stony Brook Golf Drive, so I think we all have. So I think Susan, you're onto something, and if you're a relatively new owner or resident, join the party because we've all experienced the same thing, unfortunately. But uh, we'll have. Well, a I appreciate that. I wasn't quite sure if I should go in person or Zoom, so I oh, you're took fine. a chance and just went on Zoom. But you're, you're fine, and if it's okay with the board and Elizabeth, I think we can just alert our uh, Lee County Police Patrol to the issues, and and we ultimately do have a safety and security committee we'll probably be voting on tonight. Uh, and Elizabeth, I don't mean to take your steam. I'm sorry, but uh, that's just my. Okay. Suggestions. I would say we task the safety and security and have them put them up with different scenarios and then approach um, our um, liaison to the sheriff's department. This way we're not asking them, you know, individually questions, so we can come up with a, with a few questions. And as far as um, burn marks, that would be considered destruction of property to me. So we do have we do have that, but um, after today, let's task the safety and security with um, with coming up with some scenarios and questions and then forward it to our sheriff to see if he can help us. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Should we move on, Elizabeth? I'm sorry? Shall we move on? Um, if that's all the speakers that we have, then yes. I would like to move on to make a motion to waive the reading of minutes. I'll second that motion. Okay, I do have um, just one correction. I don't know if anybody else found anything. And that would be on the March 30th. And the word is um, strike out what and quote were after present. It's right after a list of all the board members. A second that. Are all in favor of waiting the reading of minutes in with the Aye. 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 with corrections? Thank you. I have a question. Which which minutes are we voting on? I'm the March thirtieth. Okay. That's what the motion is for. Okay, thank you. Turn your notes up a little bit. I can't see how many, um, whether it passed or not. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we waive the reading of minutes for April 18th. Move to approve. Well, I'll, I'll second your motion, Elizabeth. Okay. I also have the same change. Why is to work? And it's after the listing of the board of directors. <laughs> uh, can we have a vote on that, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, Elizabeth. Uh, perfect. Thank you for bearing with me. You're up again, President's okay. report. Okay, now we move on to reports of officer, the President's report. Okay. This is my first, so please, um, what I would like to thank the board of working and being more transparent, more communication, streamlining the past processes. And if you can please bear with us as we make some changes. Uh, the second thing is repairs are continuing in the men's bathroom. It's a slow process as it's, uh, it's between coordinated between the vendors, insurance company, 
but we are moving in the right direction. Um, if you've noticed, the music and the microphone are working, which I'm very grateful. It's, it's been on hold for a long time. And there wasn't an accepted community, which is a bonus. Um, also, at the playground, we have put in a table inside the playground for the for the parents with an umbrella, which is great. We, re we did remove the two picnic tables that were next to the um, volleyball court as though were beyond repair. And also, another picnic table was added to the pickleball place. And we're in the process of ordering two more to replace the damaged ones at the bocce ball courts. Um, our gates are a struggle. They're almost hit on a daily basis. I don't know what, what to do. Um, if anybody has any suggestions, I guess fines are not working. Um, it's a cost to everybody in the community if we cannot match the plate with a timestamp for some reason. So please, please, just take the two seconds to go through the let the gate come down and let it, you know, and let it go back up after each vehicle. And my last would be ARC request. Please submit it in a timely manner. Um, so the members, they need to visit all properties. Um, and that's all I have on the president's report for this month. Thank you. Um, John, John, the treasurer's report. Yes, unfortunately, the uh, reports that I received from Alliant uh, were delayed. Uh, Alliant is working on changing of staff and responsibilities. I anticipate that I'll probably see them sometime later this week. Uh, once I have them, I will email them out to everybody on the board, um, give you the numbers, and. Uh, present them to Tammy, so if somebody has interest, they can stop by the community center. We'll try to post them. Uh, they'll also be published in the uh, newspaper for Stony Brook, so the, the numbers uh, will be out there as soon as I have some numbers to you. Thank you. And I'm not sure if there are any committee reports, as we have not assigned committee. I know the Covenants Committee met recently. Um, if you have anything to update on that, Bill? Yes, uh, we met uh, Monday uh, and looking at uh, what the ARC was putting in their manual. We uh, discussed the uh, flag issue and since the state changed the statute last July, we've been working on that and uh, we've got some updates and changes to make the, that. We're going to have put better wording in to match what the state statute says and some of our own wording. Uh, the committee will be reviewing that in about a week and we'll bring it up at the next board meeting if we have a complete and have a blessing from the attorney that what we're thinking is within the law and we'll move forward from that point. So that's where we're at. Bill, should I, Bill, should I put that on and we can always cancel it? Uh, wait till I we get to that point if I have it ready. It depends on what the uh, committee uh, decides and what we hear back from the lawyer. Okay, thanks, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I would like to know. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tammy, the property manager's report. Okay. Well, the... I, I have a question, please. If I may. Oh, sorry, Reggie. No, that's okay. Bill, just as a point of information for the folks, could you just explain to us, because I know I had to be have it explained to me, uh, procedurally, you're going to bring something back to have the lawyer review. And then, where does it go afterward, and how is it ultimately approved? These are for our CC&Rs, correct? Right. Governing documents. Just so okay. folks know uh, you, you could do right. that. Follow what I said. Once we get it put together and have Laura review it, Dennis will put it on the agenda. We, as the board, then can look at what's there. If we agree with what we put together, the board will approve it. Then the next step is to provide it to the residents to vote on. But once it's voted on, if it's carried, it becomes part of the covenant. 
If they don't, the vote doesn't carry, then it stays the way it is. Thank you. So, so it's a four step process. The board looks at it, the board makes its recommendations, get a blessing from the lawyer, get a blessing from the board, and let the people decide. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, Tammy, property manager's report, please. Yes, uh, the quarterly coupon books, the new ones have been received in the mail for your next two payments for this year. Uh, ARC committee uh, did uh, 28 approvals uh, last month. Um, last month we had nine sales and six rentals. Um, we have smart collections. We have four in collections at this time, and I've asked for an update because I believe three of the four are with the attorney. Uh, and as soon as I get that report from the collection agency, I'll forward that on to you. Uh, we have four people that have been deactivated uh, for their FOBs and barcodes due to non-payment. And then we have the consent board decision required for trash and parking fines. There were 23 parking fines and 30 trash cans. I would make a motion that we go ahead with the uh, Parking fines, the total $575, and the $3,000 for leaving the garbage cans out. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait, we don't have a second. Aye. I second. Okay. Any we discussed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.